excited for this installment. By the way, allergy season is real. If you notice my eyes kind of watery throughout the video, it's because I miss you guys. Just kidding. Well, I do miss you guys, but it's kind of watery because of my allergies. Just saying. This installment is going to be very powerful for a lot of people. I truly believe that because I believe that trauma is a topic that a lot of people deal with, whether they know it or they don't. And obviously people have varying degrees of trauma right so today we're gonna dissect trauma really explain what it is um and it's kind of some workarounds when it comes to traumatic events i'm just gonna first start off with a definition so let's get into that quote trauma is a term used to describe the challenging emotional consequences that living through a distressing event can have for an individual traumatic events can be difficult to define because the same event may be more traumatic for some people than for others I like this definition because it says the same event may be more traumatic for some people than others. So that tells us that trauma can be relative based on the person. Meaning two people could have the same event occur when they're kids um, to them. They can interpret those events differently, right? Those events will have different impacts on them. And that leads us to how trauma really sticks. How does it really stick um, in people? Trauma sticks especially in childhood because in childhood you're the most prone to programming. You're claiming to understand oneself. By doing so, you look at the environment for things, right? And when you experience trauma, it has such a powerful impact on the mind that it can shape your entire life. And another thing that happens is that kids don't have the ability to contextualize events that occur, right? So a parent's divorce, that can be very traumatic for a child because they're not able to contextualize that, hey, like adults, um, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out they can't contextualize that the kid may blame blame themselves right um for the parents divorce and that can be very traumatic it can lead to low self-esteem in the child and then that child seeks out self-esteem um as best as they can in their adult relationships uh with their partner right um in, in unhealthy ways now let's also talk about ptsd right this is more um powerful but ptsd of course stands for post-traumatic stress disorder this is when trauma just becomes reoccurring and there are triggers that strongly bring back memories of that trauma. Um, here's another quote, quote I found. When thoughts and memories of the traumatic event don't go away or get worse, they may lead to post-traumatic stress disorder, which can seriously disrupt a person's ability to regulate their emotions and maintain healthy relationships. And from the outside looking in, it could seem like, how do events keep reoccurring in a person's mind? Well, you have to understand that the mind is a survival machine and it tries to protect itself as much as possible. It tries to protect your livelihood as much as possible. So it, it's con constantly scanning for things that are a threat. This is the reptilian brain's role, right? The first part of the brain that has developed. Its role is to protect you. So it's looking for threats constantly. So if a very traumatic event has happened, so let's say a soldier at a war saw his comrade's like leg get blown off, for example. I know, very morbid, but I'm painting a picture here. If they see that, that could affect future friendships, right? Like they could literally potentially be friends with someone new, but that event, they keep, it keeps reoccurring in their head and they feel like if they become friends with this new person, they may lose them. It may sound like a far stretch, but this is how it works, right? Like an event may happen and something new comes along and it may seem, it may not seem like that big of a thing, but that new thing could trigger the previous event. Some areas where, you know, trauma can occur, are emotional abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse. Um, it could be neglect, being neglected as a child. Um, it could be experiencing poverty, for sure. It can be racism, discrimination, feeling oppressed. It can be just having mental health issues that you can't really seem to resolve. Trauma can be caused from when you feel frightened about something, when you feel like you're threatened in any sort of way. Um, you feel unsafe, you could feel um, ashamed. That could cause trauma, right? Feeling powerless feeling rejected, those types of things. You know, with trauma, what happens is once you experience it and you haven't really done the steps to resolve it, you'll carry it with you. And you may not even know that you're carrying trauma with you. You could be having relationship problems and you don't understand that's a result of your trauma. You could be having issues in your career and you don't understand that's a result of your trauma. You can have issues in your communication skills and you don't understand it's the result of your trauma. Another thing with trauma is that it can cause you to see things that aren't there because it's painting this heavy cloud in your conscious perceptions and because of that your your worldview is so skewed that's why we have such different worldviews right 
you may go around and see a certain person you're like how is this person acting like this why is this person why is this person doing x y and z that doesn't make any sense the thing the truth is you don't really understand them completely you don't understand their life experiences so if someone's acting out irrationally you have to understand that there's chances they've experienced trauma and the way they're acting is a way to protect themselves from experiencing that trauma again right um, now let's go to the other side of the totem pole some people whether they know it or they don't are addicted to trauma some people actually seek it out without really knowing it they experience it and they think it's the norm right especially if you've experienced trauma early on you think that's the norm so as you go about life you're constantly seeking out um the, your norm which is things that will bring up more trauma to you and this could sound like i'm contradicting hey like the world like the mind's looking to be safe actually i'm not because what is feeling safe feeling safe is actually feeling things that are familiar so if something is familiar even if it's not good for you but it's familiar you're going to interpret it as safe even if it's a traumatic thing a really good example is uh this recent documentary i watched by another youtuber on eminem it was extremely well done like over two hours so if you have time you can go check it out so it was documenting the life of eminem and his ex-wife kim uh kim mathers if you watch that video or you just know anything about Eminem's life, you will you will notice that he met Kim when he was very young. He was in his teenage years and so was she. Now, Kim was toxic, right? Um, and Eminem did not grow up in a great upbringing. He had low self-esteem. So what happened was he met her at such a young age, just like his first love. Um, she met him, right? They, they, they fell in love. They became very familiar with each other. They pretty much grew together, but didn't grow together. And what I mean by that is, as they got older, they were together for, very, for, many, for many years, but they didn't grow as people, is what I'm saying. So as time went on, Eminem got more popular and popular. Um, Kim didn't like that, and she would do things to undermine his career. And um, Eminem didn't know how to go about, you know, fixing his relationship. He created problems in and of himself. Um, and they would break up and they would make up and break up and then make up. Why would they do this? Such a toxic relationship. Why are they still together? It's because of that familiarity, right? They're so used to each other. So even if trauma keeps happening, right? Divorces, um, infidelity. Uh, what else happened with, with what they had going on? Eminem, you know, <laughs> releasing songs about Kim, uh, just dissing her, right? She comes back to him. Um, Eminem, you know, says X, Y, and Z. What is going on here? All of this war back and forth, right? Drug addictions, all of this. Traumatic stuff, but they're still coming, they still kept coming back together because of that familiarity. So some people are addicted to that. So you have to understand that in like let's say you have a friend and they keep doing the same thing it's safe right so that's a that's a, that's a huge that's a huge takeaway to understand we have to understand that feelings of safety is crucial for not only the development of a child but um adults as well our reptilian brain constantly scans for threats and when an event is super traumatic depending on the person it's hard to forget about it and this is me just talking about people that um aren't necessarily addicted to the trauma without knowing it just you know they experience it and they're trying to avoid it trauma can lead to addiction in people and why this is is because obviously addiction is used as a coping mechanism to feel better right drugs alcohol sex porn all those things are used as a rationale to feel better but the issue is addictions are temporary so you get that temporary dopamine rush that temporary high to feel better about the the, the 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 ill feelings you have but once that high goes away you're back to square one or in some instances you're below square one because you take that kind of that cra you kind of crash right um like you crash and what do what do addicts do they they try to go back to the high because they don't want to be they want, don't want to face themselves it's hard it's tough and this and this is the power of silence because when you sit in silence and you let your mind go you let thoughts and you let feelings come about and these could be the effects these could be the lingering effects of trauma and this is why it may be tough for some people to meditate because being being alone with your mind it's not always easy right people want to be distracted with things 
and I'm all for entertainment, but there's a time for that. There's a time for entertainment, um, being distracted, having fun, all that, but there's also a time to self-regulate and look at yourself and say, hey, why am I escaping, right? Um, why am I doing this? Why do I feel this way? How come I can't sit in an empty room by myself, right? Why am I feeling guilt? What am I feeling guilt for, right? You feel those emotions and you question them, and then now you can start having that conversation. But it starts with that silence. It starts with that awareness. Understanding trauma has allowed me to be more patient with people. Um, sometimes you see people that have unexpected responses to things you either do or say, and the truth is you don't know what the person has gone through. And sometimes people don't want to communicate their traumas, which makes sense, especially if they don't know you like that. If it's a close relationship, then it may be harder for them to even do so, right? Because they know you, right? It may be hard for them to, to communicate that. So it's not like, hey, you see someone acting a certain way. It's not always the case. Well, they'll, they'll A, know why they're acting like that and B, even tell you, right? So that's what makes this kind of difficult. Um, understanding trauma also allowed myself to be more patient with myself, right? If I'm feeling a certain type of way, I kind of understand, like on a certain, a certain type of way on a certain day, I kind of understand that. If I have a certain reaction to what someone has said to me, I'm understanding that. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna understand, hey, okay, I'm coming from a place of ego right now. If I were to respond, to, respond in this sort of way, right? Um, this person saying this reminds me of what someone said uh, back in the day or what someone said in high school or what someone said in middle school. And because of that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not only respond to what this person told me, but I'm gonna take my frustration from the past and bring it here. I'm able to be more patient with myself. I'm able to self-regulate better by understanding what trauma is all about. Let's get into solutions on how to fix trauma. I'm gonna start with my most, one of the best ways in my opinion um, is through affirmations and not just any type of affirmations. Hear me out here. Um, most people write down off affirmations and then read them out. The reason why I don't believe that that works is because you're speaking to your conscious mind in that instance. Your conscious mind, it needs evidence for things for that to work. So that's not the best approach because your constant, your conscious mind is just going to reject those affirmations, right? Like, um, like your the affirmation, I am stress-free, right? Let's say that's your affirmation. Well, if you have so much evidence of your life being stressful, you're not gonna believe that, it's not gonna work. So what you do is you record affirmations and you listen to them, but you listen to them in low volume, right? And you can choose to speed up these affirmations or slow them down, but you listen to them in very low volume, almost like you almost can't hear them and you just meditate on those affirmations, right? Very low volume, this allows it to go past just your conscious mind um, and into your subconscious mind, which really does the programming here, right? Um, your subconscious mind is really responsible for your actions. So if, you're, if your affirmation is, I am relieved of the effects of trauma, right? Let's say that that's your affirmation. That is what you want to be played, right? And um, I'm sure you find videos on it, like people play music over, um, may play like some music over the affirmations. That way it goes into your subconscious mind. And um, one of the best ways to actually do this is before you head to bed and um, after you wake up, some people listen to uh, affirmations as they sleep, up to you. Another solution is cognitive behavioral therapy. So what this does is you look at your core beliefs, um, you look at your assumptions and you look at your negative thoughts. So you wanna examine triggers your thoughts to those triggers, um, your emotions to those triggers, and then your behaviors to those triggers, right? Because your actions start from thoughts. Let's say as a kid, someone was attacked by a pit bull, right? So they have this extreme phobia of pit bulls, right? So when they are walking down the street, instant trigger, um, they see a pit, pit bull, that instantly triggers them to feel scared, feel, to feel fear, right? Um, and then physical distress could be, they start tensing up, they start sweating, um, right? They have some, they have some, um, some anxiety in the solar plexus region of the stomach. Uh, and then negative behaviors, you know, uh, it could cause them to be paranoid as they, it could cause them to uh, not wanna go on walks anymore, right? To stay indoors, because they have such a fear of pit bulls, 
with cognitive behavioral therapy, they can catch themselves. So what happens is they see a pit bull and then they immediately notice that them seeing the tr that them seeing the pit bull is a trigger. So they're like, okay, I'm triggered right now. Notice that awareness is going on. I'm triggered right now. Now I'm, ha now I'm about to have negative thoughts, right? But now I'm assuming that this pit bull is bad based off my past experience, based on my trauma, I'm assuming this pit bull is bad, right? This pit bull could be well-trained, it could be within a very nice owner, etc. But because of my past, I'm assuming that, right? So they start having negative thoughts and those negative thoughts causes negative emotions. And now you notice, okay, I'm, I'm tensing up. Let me try to, let me relax. Let me relax my body. Let me start relaxing my body. Let me clear my mind. And then let me watch my behavior. How come I'm no longer going on walks? Let me start going on walks again. So this is cognitive behavioral therapy. It's watching what causes you to see reality in such a distorted way, right? And to misinterpret things. And this is what I mean by how people, people's trauma can cause them to see things that aren't really there per se. I'm not saying the pit bull isn't there. The pit bull is definitely there, but assuming how, how the outcome will be. Um, another one is uh, ex just exposure therapy. Um, this is where you just expose yourself to a stimulus that you have fear of or a situation or an area you have fear of um, little by little. So if someone is, let's say someone had a bad experience with snakes once, um, they just start by looking at cartoon pictures of snakes, right? Very happy cartoony pictures of snakes. And then they move to maybe videos of snakes, right? Um, quick videos of snakes and then a little longer videos of snakes, right? And then through time, maybe they start, um, you know, going to the zoo, check out snakes through there. So there's a progression. And also with exposure therapy, you want to um, change your associations. So a lot of trauma causes you to have associations about things. So in the snake example, you associate them with very negative negativity, <laughs> which I know snakes are, ah. but some people don't associate snakes with a lot of negativity right so it's relative so that means that okay if i really want to kind of get over this i don't have to love snakes but what can i do to make snakes less what can i do to associate snakes with less scary things maybe i learn more about them maybe i just immerse myself a bit more on snakes i don't have to love them but i associate them with something else rather than what i'm what i have fear of if you have a fear if you if someone made fun of you when you were working out a long time ago and now you're, you're scared of working out in front of others or going to the gym or whatever just start little by little and then it's, it's exposure therapy work out with a partner one-on-one -on -one. and then um, you know go running outside for a little bit and then head to a gym for like 10 minutes right so this is what I mean by exposure therapy um, and for, in some cases, depending on the severity of the trauma, sometimes it's best to just not um, expose it. Like if it's like a location, sometimes it's best to just not go to like that location for a time being, for a time period, right? Like if the, if the event is relatively new, you don't want to, ex and just not going to that place anytime soon is important and then maybe in the future when you come back it'll be better for your healing right so time is another thing um sometimes you have to give things you have to give give it time you can't just look to solve it in a particular way you have to give it time um time heals some wounds that's definitely the case uh also another important thing is to remember there's no right or wrong way to feel so a lot of times we may feel like oh we shouldn't be feeling this way because of this occurring i shouldn't feel like that there's no right or wrong way you are you you are you like you are you so if you feel distressed if you feel um if you feel depressed from something happened or if you feel um unsettled by something that's okay right there's no one way for you to feel all you have to understand is that you feel this way and if you want to and and that's okay but if you're if you want to move forward you have to take actions to move forward right because if you feel like you shouldn't feel this way you're going to start guilting yourself and then it's a downward spiral yeah so when you so when we talk about trauma we want to really think of how we've experienced trauma and how others have experienced trauma and how 
our traumatic experiences are shaping our communication, are shaping our reality around us and things like that. Um, because it, it is constantly doing so. Because our trauma is shaping our thoughts and our thoughts are shaping our beliefs and our beliefs are shaping our actions. And this is the reality creation right here, right? This is what reality creation is all about. Um, and then what happens is the mind sees evidence of things. So it sees the evidence and then it has a conf it confirms it. It's like, okay, this is how reality works. And then it's a cycle. But if you can break that cycle, then you have a new belief pattern, new actions, and your reality is different. So that's reality creation. It's not as mystical as you may think. Uh, it's actually pretty pragmatic. Um, and I'll probably make some, some videos on that in the future. But overall guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on understanding people trauma. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna have a lot of short, short form content coming out, but also a lot of long form video content coming out. So I'm excited. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.